Why hasn't the real estate market crashed in South Florida? I know all the YouTubers telling you that it's gonna crash, 50% price drops, all that kind of stuff. But we're gonna take a look at what's really going on in the marketplace in South Florida, and we're getting after it right now. and you want to know everything there is about what it's like to live, work, eat, sleep, and play in the Palm Beaches of South Florida, be sure and hit that like and subscribe button because we are putting out new content every week and you don't want to miss out on that. Now, if you want to get a hold of us, you can reach out by phone, text, email. Heck, you can even send a message in a bottle because that works too. Now, we get people reaching out to us every day and we absolutely love it. So give us a call, a text, an email, any way you want to get a hold of us, we got your back. If you're thinking about moving to the Palm Beaches of South Florida. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is there's still a lack of inventory. The inventory was so uh, skewed. Uh, there was a one month supply of inventory last year and the year before. So 2021 and 2022, one month supply. Now there's about a two month supply of inventory. Now that's on single family. The condo market is a little bit higher than that. But I don't know if you know this, but a healthy real estate market is six months of inventory. We're still running at a two month inventory, which is really an unhealthy market. You are sick. Still? So when you come out of this crazy market where things were selling in a day with, you know, 20, 30 offers, and you get to something that's just maybe, you know, a little bit slower than that, it seems like, wow, the sky's falling, the, the market's crashing. And then if you, put interest rates in there too, but we'll get to that. The market's crashing no. later on. So don't let some YouTuber that says, oh, huge reduction prices are, are dropping by 300,000, by 500,000. It was just overpriced to begin with, whether it was in last year's market or this market, it still wouldn't have sold. So we still have a very low supply out there. And there's a couple of factors that are causing this that we're going to touch on here briefly. So what you're finding out there too is free markets take care of price. They take care of inventory. If you're overpriced as a seller, your property is going to sit there longer. The asking price doesn't dictate what a property should sell for. It dictates how long you're going to wait to get what you're going to get. So if you're overpriced drastically, your house is never going to sell. It's going to sit there. Maybe it'll sell five years from now. But if the market's not going up and you're overpriced, it's not selling because there's going to be plenty of houses out there where people will come in to that marketplace and they'll make offers on and they'll sell. So inventory is up 30%, but and we're going to look deeper at that, but it's still not a healthy inventory. And properties that are overpriced are just going to sit there and sit there until someone makes a price adjustment on it. Then it'll come down to where someone will say, you know what, I think I'll make an offer on this. So that's what's going on there. The market's kind of adjusting. Sellers are out of whack a little bit. And some of these buyers coming in now are out of whack. They're thinking they're gonna get stuff at half price or something because the market dropped a little bit or, or is about the same. It's not going up. It's not escalating 10% uh, or 50% in a year that they think, okay, now I can come in there. I smell blood in the water. That's not happening. Are you crazy? So I don't know where I hear this stuff on YouTube, but I don't see that happening. Get some data to show what's really going on. We'll do this quickly though. So basically this is for my whole MLS service area. This is your Broward County, Palm Beach, um, Treasure Coast area. It's my whole entire MLS. So basically close sales down 14%, median price up 5%, and then homes for sale is up. So inventory is up substantially but it's still nothing like it should be. So if we go down to some of these charts, but the median sales price basically in May of this year versus last year, it's up a little bit. Townhouses and condos, same thing. Year to date, same thing. Same thing with the townhouses and condos. So prices have actually still going up. Is that crazy? We had everyone tell us the market's crashing and it hasn't crashed. Um, average sale price is up, all right? dollar volume is down so there aren't as many sales so so basically there's not as many sales but prices are still staying the same or going up percentage of list price received before we were getting 100 percent now they're getting like 94 95 percent well what's happening there people are overpricing their houses like i said before and then they're having to take a little bit less than they're asking because some of the sellers think the market's still going skyrocket who knows maybe it will and that month supply of inventory at 2.8 and 3.4 respectively 
on single family and then townhouses and condos. So basically the market's going up a little bit, but the prices are still up as well. That's what the data says and the data doesn't lie. So people are still moving down here. If you went to the tax collector office and see people getting license plates and driver's license, uh, all those types of things, you're gonna see that people are still coming down here. They're still moving here and they're setting up shop in South Florida. And one of the reasons for that is it's a sideways move for a lot of people. So let's say you're living up in New York or Illinois, and let's say your house is worth a million dollars. Now you can come down here and you can spend your million dollars, but there's ways to come down here and spend 500 or $700,000. So you're keeping some cash, taking out some of your equity, and you're buying uh, your retirement property, or even if it's a second home, whatever it might be, it's more of a sideways move for a lot of people. It's not like they're coming down here and spending more. Yes, some of the property values in certain parts of Florida are higher than where people are coming from, but they're wanting to take that risk. They're wanting to come down here and live in South Florida. And the secret's out. South Florida is a great place to live. Oh my gosh, look at that. Baby turtles, and look at a mama turtle just got done laying her eggs, heading back into the water. That's the kind of stuff you see down here in South Florida. So I don't think people are gonna stop coming down here. Uh, I was out this morning, hooked up on a big tarpon, uh, hooked up on one the other day too, hooked up on a shark. My buddy had a bull shark on the line, spooled him. So um, that's just some fun stuff. I can go golfing. I played tennis the other day. Yes, it was 90 degrees out. Going to play golf this weekend. You know, it doesn't get any better than living in South Florida. So South Florida is still the number one destination that people are retiring to. It's number one destination both uh, nationally, it beats every state out right now, and then also uh, internationally, it's like the number two place to go to is South Florida, so or Florida for that matter. So it's not just a uh, flash in the pan, people are still coming here, and they're still wanting to be here in the Palm Beaches of South Florida. And one of the reasons people like to retire here, there's a ton of 55 and older communities, uh, golf courses, tennis courts, there's water sports, all these great things to do. We have the, the one of the largest number of 55 and olders. I mean, probably next would be like Arizona has a lot of them, places like that. But, but Florida has a ton of 55 and older and they treat their seniors well here. They get special tax breaks. Also, a lot of veterans like to move to South Florida because there's a lot of VA hospitals in the area. So they have a lot of that going on. Um, it's just a great place to live, a great place to retire. And when you come down here, you're active. You're not just sitting there doing nothing. There's so much to do here. It's absolutely mind boggling. You never run out. I get you know, asked to do things all the time. I like to golf. I like to play tennis. I like to go snorkeling, uh, paddle boarding, bike ride, anything. Just going out at night. There's tons of entertainment. There's tons of... Uh, live entertainment going on everywhere. You can be out all year round doing things, you know, it's, you know, except for when it gets super hot or rainy or hurricane or something like that. You can pretty much be outdoors doing some really cool things. There's really some cool shit to do down in South Florida. So do I think the market's gonna crash? You know what, honestly, I don't know. Is it a little bit frothy? Yeah. Is it dropped a little bit? Yeah, it has, um, but there's still people out there buying and selling. People want to be in South Florida. And if you're one of those people and you're thinking about buying or selling real estate in South Florida, give me a call, a text, an email, or go to my website down there, soldwithray.com, and we'll get you started uh, looking for properties in the Palm Beaches of South Florida. I'm Ray Patrick, your real estate expert. So my final thoughts on will the market crash? You know, I think it has to at least level out at some point, um, which it has done that, but it's, it's got to correct some somewhat um, because it's actually the affordability on properties down here is way out of whack. Um, I don't know how a person, you know, say these areas have average income of 50,000. Even with both people working, say their income's $100,000, how they're buying a $500,000 house. They're going to be spending all their money on just a place to live. They gotta have, you know, food, you gotta have clothing, you gotta have everything else too. Car, gas, everything. So your utilities, 
So right now, uh, there still is a lot of demand um, and supply is low, so that keeps the prices up. So until that time happens, when it starts to uh, correct itself, and it will correct itself, okay, it will do it. Unless we have some sort of black swan event too, that could happen, make it happen a lot quicker. But for right now, the prices are still strong. If you're making a sideways move, you've cashed out and you're coming down here. Uh, even if the property goes down in value, it's not like you're paying a payment on it. You're just paying what you, you've already paid for the property. So that wouldn't affect those people as much as people that are making a mortgage payment. The other thing to keep in mind, builders uh, right now, actually, they're at a huge advantage um, over the regular retail seller. They are doing buy downs on the rates. So instead of them, a buyer paying 7%, they're going to them, they're getting a 6% rate or 5.5% rate or whatever. They're flush with cash and they have the ability to do that. So they're still selling properties. New construction is still selling down here. I don't care what anybody says. So if you are thinking about buying or selling in the Palm Beaches of South Florida, give me a call, a text, an email. I look forward to hearing from you.